Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to do a full setup guide for Melon DS Standalone on Android so that we can play our favorite Nintendo DS games whenever we want. There's a few reasons why you'd want to use Melon DS Standalone over others. For Retro Achievements users, it's the only Android DS emulator that can do upscaling with Retro Achievements and that's one example. Another reason is it is still in active development, as opposed to something like Drastic, which is fairly out of date now and really only used for low-end devices. There is also a Melon DS DS core in RetroArch that is also very good, but that does not have upscaling on Android as of yet. It actually does on x86 devices like Windows and Linux, but not Android. So essentially, Melon DS is a really good option for standalone on Android. Okay, so right off the bat, you are of course going to need Nintendo DS games if you plan on following today's guide. And I would suggest just simply creating a ROMs folder on your internal storage, and then an NDS folder inside of it where you will put all of your Nintendo DS games. As far as finding the games yourself, the ROMs GitHub is a great resource, and that should help you quite a bit. And then you'll also want decrypted Nintendo DS ROMs. And these can actually be zipped still. You don't have to unzip them. Quick reminder that all of today will all be done on the Android device. You don't need a PC or anything like that for anything from today. Okay, so let's go ahead and install Melon DS. And you have two options here. There is the Google Play Store version as well as the GitHub version. Both are the exact same. So it just depends on whether you want to use Google Play or not. And most people likely opt for the Google Play Store version since it's easier to get updates and all that. But if you want to choose the GitHub version, just head to that GitHub, select the latest release, whatever that is. Today's video, it is beta 1.10. Download and install the APK and you're done. In the future, just grab whatever the latest release is from the GitHub if you're choosing to go that route and all the links are in the description in case you need it. Once you've installed it, go ahead and open it. The very first thing that it's asking for is for you to select your ROM directory. And ROMs are just another name for games. So it's basically asking, where did you put your Nintendo DS games on your device? And we did this earlier. They would be on our internal storage, the ROMs folder, and yes folder, and so we'll select that. You should now see all of your games start to populate in Melon DS. Let's go ahead and select the three dots top right to jump into settings. If we head into general, there is an option here to set the fast forward max speed. Maybe you have a very powerful device and it's just too fast at unlimited speed. So you can cap that here if you want something slower. Now, if you have a low-end device, this won't do anything for you, and it won't magically speed up your fast-forward or anything like that. This is all for limiting your power, and you are limited by your power when it comes to fast-forward speed. You can also enable rewind, and there's a disclaimer here where you need a pretty hefty device to use this. This one is your call. I actually never use this, I don't see a reason to, but you might be different. Head back and into Save Files. Now, by default, any of your saves and states will be located within your ROM folder. So, with our current setup, all your saves and states will be right in your ROM slash NDS folder that we created earlier. However, maybe you want to have your saves and states separate, somewhere else. So this part is optional, but what you can do is uncheck Save Next to ROM File, select Save File Directory, Create a Melon DS folder just on your internal storage if you want, or if you have an SD card connected, you can put it there. And then all of your saves and states will now save into that folder, and it'll be nice and organized. This is actually what I personally do, so feel free to throw this onto your SD card if you'd like, and that'll help you share it with multiple devices, or it'll make it easy if you want to do sync thing across multiple devices. You can also change where your save states are stored if you don't want them with your saves and all of that, so you have that option as well. Back out now and let's head into video. I would change renderer to OpenGL because that unlocks upscaling. And now you can see that we can change the internal resolution and upscale our game if our device can handle it. 
ADAX native might be too hefty for a lot of devices out there, so don't just copy me, you might get some slowdown. Play around with this to see what works best for you. Upscaling is a major feature available to Melon DS, especially for Retro Achievements users, as no other emulator or core can do upscaling with Retro Achievements. So we are eating very well here. Feel free to enable the FPS counter here now if you'd like to see how your games are performing, or you can keep it off if you just want to go in blind. Back out and this time head to input. If you have a controller or a handheld, turn off show soft input to get rid of the on-screen touch controls. Then let's head into key mapping. Go ahead and map the buttons to your device for a Nintendo DS. I like to set R2 to fast forward toggle and L2 to swap screens. L3 I use for quick save and R3 for quick load. If you want to map anything else or you don't like the way that I map things, then feel free to change it to what you have, especially if you have more buttons than I do and you can use them. Now, one quick tip, if you map toggle microphone, you can use that in games that need it. It mimics a blow, but if you head into the audio settings, you can change it to your device's microphone, if it has one and it works. Just more options for you, depending on the games and your needs, but for most people, just toggle microphone on as a button will work and it'll help you in a lot of games. Back out and this time head into layouts. The default layout is selected and that's what's used, but you can create your own layouts if you'd like. Choose the plus icon top right, and this will show you what the default looks like right now, but if you don't like things, you can just adjust them. If you hit the menu button, bottom right, you can revert changes, add your own background image, and all of that sort of thing. So you can really get in nitty gritty for customizing here. I am going to exit without saving, but feel free to create your own layout if you don't like the first layout that you get. Back out and you can head into the retro achievement section and log in with yours if you want to use those. Lastly, head back and into cheats. There is an awesome cheat database on GBA temp. So let's go ahead and grab that. Once again, all links from today's video are in the description. Scroll down to download and grab it from the mega link. It's gonna take some time to download. It is going to download as a zip and you need to extract it. So I personally use the app Solid Explorer as a file manager and that has a built-in extractor, but you can use whatever you want. That app is right on the Play Store if you wanna follow what I do, but you can just extract the zip and then let's head back to Melon DS and we'll enable cheats. Then go ahead and click import cheats, head inside of the folder that we just extracted, cheat databases and select the XML file that's inside. Now it's gonna import a whole bunch of cheats for Melon DS. When you're done, hit back and head to the main screen. On the main screen, hit the settings cog to the right of a game. And now you can make per game changes here. Like for example, maybe you want a specific layout, like a full screen layout for one game. So you would create one and then you can select the game to use it here. You can also see the Retro Achievements tab to show the achievements for this game if you want to. Go ahead and click a game to play it. R2 will fast forward, so you can see my FPS just shoots up because it's going fast. L2 will swap screens, so you can see those move back and forth. My L3 is set to quick save and my R3 is set to quick load. And if you map the pause button, push that to get the in-game menu. Otherwise, you don't usually have to map the pause button because if you swipe up, you can push the back arrow to get the in-game menu. On a lot of handhelds, you can push the back button on your handheld and it should pop up. Or sometimes you can swipe in from the left and it should pop up then. So you have a few ways to get that in-game menu that doesn't require using a control to map it. Settings brings you back to the main settings to change a whole bunch of things, and this will apply to all games, but there's a cheat section here. Open that, and you can see all of the cheats for this game if they exist. And for the database that we imported, most games pretty much have these. Go ahead and just select any cheats that you want to enable and then use them. You can also reset or exit from this menu. Otherwise, that is all there is to Melon DS in setting it up, configuring it, and getting you ready to play Nintendo DS games. We went over everything and anything that I could personally think of, and you should now be able to do anything that you want 
in MelonBS using today's guide and the different timestamps. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro gaming. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.